Okay, here we're going to be using the direct cash flow method to determine our cash flow statement. And this is where we use the actual cash flows through our cash account. And we're going to be using this equation here, where assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. So what I've done here with assets, I've broken it apart between the cash asset here and all other assets. So let's go down and look at how we'd uh, set up our equation. And for our assets here, we'd have the change in cash plus all these other assets equal our change in liabilities plus our change in stockholders equity. So uh, what I've done here is I've moved this change or this change in other assets over to the other side of the equation. So what we would have here is the change in cash equals minus the change in all the other assets plus the change in liabilities plus this change in stockholders equity. Okay, let's look at our change in cash for investing activities. And that would be where we're looking at the company's non-operating long-term assets. So if we go down to our accounting equation here, uh, let's say, for example, we had an increase in these long-term uh, non-operating assets here. So what that increase equates over to in our cash change would be a decrease in our cash do the arithmetic here. And in the case here where we had a decrease in these long-term assets, it would be an increase here in our cash account. So if we go down here and just look at our uh, these long-term assets here in our T accounts, where we uh, it makes sense here because an increase or debit amount here in these uh, long-term assets would be a credit here to our cash. And vice versa, a reduction here in these long-term assets would be a debit here or an increase in our cash. So if we go over here and just look at our cash flow statement for investing activities, first we'd be looking at our cash inflows. And they would be like this for the sale of property, plant, and equipment, or the sale of a debt or equity security um, th that we own of another entity, or if we're collecting principal on a loan from another entity. And then our cash outflows would be like for the purchase of property, plant, and equipment or the purchase of these debt or equity securities. And then what we would do is we'd be looking at the difference here between the cash inflows and the cash outflows and that would be the net cash provided or used by these investing activities. All right, to expand on what typical long-term assets could include, there would be like long-term investments in stocks and bonds. Those would be investments in other company stocks and bonds that we're holding here as a long-term asset. And then we'd be looking at loan advances, notes receivable long-term, and security deposits. And for property, plant, and equipment, it could include land, buildings, building improvements, machinery and equipment, office equipment, vehicles, leasehold improvements, other property, plant, and equipment, and natural resources. Okay, word of caution here when you're dealing with these long-term assets. And let's just look at property, plant, and equipment here. And say, for example, it increased from, say, $100,000 to $120,000 in that account. So we had a plus or a $20,000 increase. Well, it may not be due to a cash exchange. Maybe we purchase some property, plant, and equipment here on credit. So in this case, it would be a non-cash charge up here, and it would be a, a liability that we would increase here by $20,000. And at the same token here, if we had a decrease here in property, plant, and equipment, say it went from $100,000 down to $88,000, so we had a $12,000 decrease here. Well, that may be a non-cash charge due to depreciation. So uh, the depreciation here would be increased and it would be recognized as an expense up here, which is a non-cash expense. So then a word of caution here. Be careful when you're looking at some problems and you just see increases and decreases in these long-term assets. Okay, so where we have these increases and decreases here in our long-term assets, we have to go in and make an analysis of where the increase or decrease came from and whether it was a cash or a non-cash charge. So if we're looking here at asset reduction, for example, uh, we could look, be looking at accumulated depreciation here in property, plant, and equipment. That would reduce our property, plant, and equipment. And then accumulated amortization here would also reduce like our bonds that we're holding here as an investments, so they would be amortized over the life of the bond. And again, that would be a non-cash charge or it would be an expense that would be 
be charged to our net income. And then, again, be careful with the intangible assets here as patents, organizational costs, goodwill. Now, if the patent was an investment here, of course, that would be a cash transaction. But uh, you have to be uh, vigilant here to make sure that there's no cash in uh, involved here. Okay, in summary, our change in cash due to investing activities of the company, that would involve the non-operating long-term assets. So if we look up here at our cash account where we have an increase in our cash account up here, our uh, debit amount here to our cash account, that would be a cash inflow to the company. And where we have a reduction here in cash or credit here to cash, that would be a cash outflow. The to the company. So going down here and looking at our cash flow statement for investing activities, we'd be looking here, we'd be having our cash inflows listed and then our cash outflows listed and then we'd be netting the, the amount of cash inflows and cash outflows. So we'd come up with the amount here of net cash provided or use for investing activity. So if you had a provided a cash to the investing activities that would be an increase in cash and then cash used would be a decrease in cash. And that's what we're looking for in our cash flow statement here. This net amount is it either positive or negative.